Hello, Blun, and welcome to this edition of WBLN. In this time of COVID, when students are virtual and sports seasons are on a go or on hold due to the exposure, one team has come together to defy all the odds, and they are heading to the state championship. Manny Rodriguez has more. For the first time in five years, the varsity soccer team has a chance to retake the state title. This time, the Jesuits from Tampa stand in the way. You guys are up against a difficult Tampa Jesuit squad. What does it mean to be able to play this team for the first time, another Jesuit school, and how do you guys prepare for them? Yeah, so, obviously there's a lot of hype around them. They're uh, ranked pretty well. We know that they're a good team. I mean, you hear Tampa Jesuit and everyone's scared, but um, I think we've been pretty confident with, confident with the way we've been playing. Um, I think we stand a good chance, and uh, it's just a matter of not looking down on them. You know, they're our opponents, and um, at the end of the day, it's whoever puts in the most work. Gianluca, what does this mean to you personally to be on this team and getting an opportunity to compete for a state championship? Oh, uh, well, for me, it means the world to me. I mean, I've been playing here since I was a kid. Seventh grade, I started playing for Belen. Um, I looked up to the class of 2016 who won the championship. And uh, I just hope that one day that would be me. And just being in the stage like this is crazy. Especially being a captain of all these boys is an honor. You, you mentioned the 2016 team, and so this is the second time we've, we've had the opportunity to compete for states. What do you think this means to the school, and what have you thought about the support that you've gotten such far? Oh yeah, I mean, support has been crazy. All the students showing up to the game despite the pandemic. I mean, we didn't even think we were going to have a crowd this year. And um, I mean, I hear it everywhere I go, the nurses, the teachers, all congratulating us, and I can really feel that the school has our back. Danger. ¿Qué significa ese equipo para usted? What does this team mean to you? It's special. Uh, all the years, um, my time here, 14 years, all the years they say me emotion, say me hard work. It's the team right now repeated the, the two teams before 2011, 2016. Uh, same emotions. It's very important for for all the kids, the the team, and all the students in Belém, the image, the group, the seniors who are graduated for college, for university. It's very important. Uh, the team, the Saturday re response, and the answers, all the times, for all, big win. Gianluca. Last Friday, you were out on the bench in that semifinal game. Walk me through what was going through your head in that moment, and especially in those last 20 minutes. Yeah, so, I mean, it was a really slow game. Um, obviously, I, I have a lot of confidence in our group. So regardless of me being on the field, I knew we uh, had a good chance of making the state final. But we started off pretty slow. Uh, the last 20 minutes came, we were still down 1-0. Um, I can't say I was losing hope, but I was a little bit desperate, and thankfully when we scored, I just knew that it was going to go up from there. And I was really proud of the team. We heard that you're going to be on the field this coming Saturday. What are you most looking forward to, and what is your message to the members of the team? I mean, wearing the shirt for the last time is always a sad thing, but to be able to wear it in the state championship is amazing. Um, I'm really proud of our group. We've worked so hard. Um, everybody's dedicated a lot of time. And um, the only message I have to the group is we have to give it our all and we're going to bring it home. What's your message to the team, to the players? My message is everybody much at peace, uh, concentrated, focusing, and, and the plan, the team for the termination in, inside the field. Uh, much integration, the, the group, and 100% hard, play hard. This is more possible that the team uh, conquist uh, the, the championship. Although this has been a historical season, it's not until these two great teams take the pitch and seal their fate. For WBLN News, I'm Manny Rodriguez. Thank you, Manny. As students prepare to pick classes for next year, what should they look for in their course selection? Every year, colleges look for students that challenge themselves and step up to the next level. 
We talk to college counselor Ms. Ziquez on which classes look best to college when talking about course selection. In choosing your courses, obviously we push you because we want you to be taking the AP and the honor courses, dual enrollment if you're able to take that as well. However, the reason why we want you to see your guidance counselors is sometimes your guidance counselors know, you know, what you can handle. Um, Obviously, the colleges like to see the dual enrollment, they like to see the AP, they like to see the honors, they like to see you pushing yourself, the rigor of your uh, transcript. However, it is very important that you make appointments with the guidance counselors as well um, in order to see exactly what it is that you need to be taking. Also remember, it is important to take classes like yearbook and journalism so colleges are able to see diversity in your character. Teach Hope Spread Love is a student-run organization that strives to teach and spread love to the homeless. Isaiah Fuller tells us more. What better way than to spend a Sunday afternoon in downtown Miami giving food to the homeless? Well, that's exactly what a group of Belen kids did. A group that is dedicated to feeding Miami's unfortunate population is known as Teach Hope Spread Love. The group leader of this event was sophomore Victor Torres. Well, as the name says it, teach hope, spread love. We want to spread the love and teach these people hope because they don't have a lot of hope in their life. They're kind of struggling and going through rough times and we just want to spread out and bring positivity to them and some dark times for them. They brought together items such as sandwiches, chips, bottled water, and even masks to care for the less fortunate. Together, they were all able to put together over 150 bags of food. The homeless were met with trunk fulls of food and the warm hearts of Belen students. Many lined up to receive the generous offering and even gave words of praise and encouragement. It's not the big things, it's the little things. For WBLN, I'm Isaiah Fuller. Thank you, Isaiah. Pope Francis has landed in Iraq for his historic tour of the war ravaged nation, where he's expected to meet with the members of the country's dwelling in Christian community and draw attention to their plight. The trip, which marks the first ever papal visit to Iraq, will also include meetings with the country's top political and religious officials. Today, the pontiff will be hold meetings with Prime Minister Mustafa al-Kadimi and President Baharam Saleh. He will later meet with the clerics and other officials at two Baghdad churches, including one that was the site of a bloody 2010 massacre. The Pope's Iraq trip could be his most dangerous yet, but the country's dwindling Christian minority hope it heals their wounds. Iraqi officials have hailed the visit as the important moment for the country. While, prevailing, while privately admitting that he, the timing of the trip has provided a challenge for authorities, the Pope is also scheduled to visit several Iraqi areas and cities like, linked to the Bible, such as the Plain of the UR, considered the birthplace of Abraham. What's up Wolverines, I'm Rabbi B. Espen, here are your sports for today. The varsity soccer team will play against Tampa Jesuit in the state championship game tomorrow. The game will place take place at DeLand at 4.30. Varsity lacrosse takes on Gulliver Prep today after school in a battle featuring two of Miami's top lacrosse teams. The team will also play Archbishop McCarthy on Saturday. Varsity Wallapo lost 15-11 in a close game against Gulliver this week. The team will look to bounce back in the Forza Stefano tournament this weekend. Now onto the pros. The Florida Panthers took on the Nashville Predators last night, winning 5-3. The Heat finished the first half of the regular season with a win over the Pelicans. Jimmy Butler led the way with 29 points in their 103-93 win. Thank you, Robbie. That's all your news for today. Make sure to follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. From everyone here, stay safe.